In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use Blender's Wave Modifier. And using Blender's Wave Modifier, I've animated all of these different objects. And if you'd like to use the same 3D models to follow along with this tutorial, then you can download the free project files on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. I'll have the links in the description. And if you're downloading the files on Gumroad, if you'd like to send me a little tip, then you can throw a few dollars into the price box before purchasing, and that's a great way to support this channel. So in this video, I'll cover all of the settings of the Wave Modifier, and then I'll show you how how to change the settings to animate these different objects. Now one more thing before we start, if you're interested in learning more about animation in Blender, then I highly recommend checking out P2Design's animation course. P2 Design's Alive Animation course is packed with tons of animation learning content. Great for beginner and intermediate Blender users. This course will teach you the basics of animation, adding keyframes, interpolation modes using the timeline, graph editor, and there are also some beginner animation exercises in the course. The course also shows you how to make a walk cycle and has some other animation tutorials. Check out the course with the link in the description, and if you purchase the course through my affiliate link, you'll be helping to support this channel. So I'm going to start by selecting this object here, this cute little blob character, and then I'll press Shift H, and Shift H is going to hide all of the other objects. Now before I add the wave modifier, if I hit the tab key to go into edit mode, you can see this object is pretty subdivided. And that is very important when you're using the wave modifier, because the wave modifier is going to move the geometry of the mesh, so if you're using an object which is very low poly, then it may not look that detailed. So let's go back to object mode, and then if you click over here on the modifier properties, which is the wrench icon, we can add modifiers. So we'll click on add modifier, and then we can just start to search for it. So we'll type in wave, and we can add the wave modifier. Now the wave modifier is going to deform the mesh in a wave shape, and it's going to deform the mesh during an animation. So if you just press the spacebar or click on the play button here, you can start to play it, and you can see that already it's deforming the mesh in a wave shape, and so it kind of looks like this blob character is jumping up and down. So you can see at the start here, it starts to pull all the mesh up, and then it starts to pull the rest of the mesh with it, and then it all comes up, and then it starts to bring the mesh back down, and then the top part of the mesh comes back down to follow along with it. Now, as I mentioned, the wave modifier is going to actually use the geometry of the mesh to deform the object. So if I go to the add menu here and just add a simple object like a plane, let's move the plane over. If I now go into edit mode, you can see the plane just has four vertices. So on this plane, if I go to add modifier and add a wave modifier to this object, now if I play it, you can see it's not really that detailed. And even if I go into edit mode and select the object and rotate it on the X axis, by 90 degrees, so I'm rotating it over sideways. Now if I play this, you can see again, it's not really that detailed, it's just kind of moving up and down. If I go into edit mode and then press Control E and then choose subdivide, I can subdivide this and right behind me, I'll open up the subdivide settings and I will turn up the number of cuts so it's much more subdivided. Let me turn this up really high to like 100. Now if I go back to object mode and play this, you can see it already has more of that wave shape because it's more subdivided. And another way to add more detail to a mesh is to simply use the subdivision surface modifier. So this is already pretty detailed, but if I wanted it to be even more detailed, I could go add modifier and I could search for the subdivision surface modifier, and then we'd want it to subdivide the mesh before the wave. So I can click on these dots here and drag them up and drop them here, and then I could turn up the levels to two, and now it's going to be even more subdivided. So it is much more smooth. You can kind of see on the edges there it is smooth, but now the scene is kind of acting kind of laggy because it's so subdivided. So that is just another way to subdivide the mesh if you want to give Bit more detail. So let's go over the wave modifier settings. So if I just play this again, you can see there is a motion and there is the X axis and the Y axis. So if I turn these off, you can see it's just going to bob up and down. So it's going to move up and down on the Z axis. If I turn up the X though, you can now see that it's moving up and down and it's going sideways on the X axis. So the wave is kind of starting out over here and then as it moves along, it goes from left to right. And then if I choose the Y one as well, then the entire thing is going to move up and down. But you can see it's kind of starting out from the center, and then it's kind of moving out to the end of the mesh. Or I can just choose the Y one, but turn the X off. And now it kind of looks like he's like jumping forward, kind of like a worm or a snake moving up and down. Now the cyclic here is going to make sure that it loops. So if I just go back to the starting here and turn the cyclic off, now if I play this, he's only going to bob up and down once. But if I want it to loop and play multiple times, I can keep that cyclic on. And now it's just going to continue to loop the wave. 
Now, I can also choose the along normals here, and this way, the wave is going to move along the normals. Now, the normals are the way the faces are pointing. So if I go into edit mode, I can zoom in here, and let me just go to the face select. So for example, this face here is pointed out this way, so the normal of this face is going out this way. However, if I go over here to this one, this face is kind of moving up this way, so the normal is going along here. And so every face has a normal direction, and it's the way the face is pointing. And if you'd like to learn more about normals in Blender, then definitely check out my Understanding Normals video. I'll have a link in the description to that video. So if I choose along normals, now I can play this and you can see it's basically going to look like he's getting bigger or smaller because the wave is moving along the normals and so the normals are facing outwards. So he kind of looks like he's getting bigger or smaller. And then I can choose between using the X, Y, and Z axis. So I could just use the Z, now it's moving up and down, or just the Y, or also just the X. Or I can just turn them all on. Now I've tried playing around with the fall off setting and I've even done some research online and I really can't make the fall off do anything. So if you guys know what the fall off can do, then definitely let me know in the comments. But I've tried using the fall off and I can't really make it do anything. Now the height here is pretty simple. That is just going to be the height of the wave. So if I want the wave to be very subtle, I could turn that down. You can see it's quite small now. Or I can make the height really big and now it kind of makes it look like the cute blob character is like jumping up and down really big. And then there's also the width here. And so if I turn the width up really high, you can see there's going to be more of a pause in between his jump. Or if I turn the width really small, now you can see he's going to jump much quicker. So if I turn this to a very small number, the width is so small, there's like a bunch of little waves. Or if I just turn this up really big, the entire character is jumping and there's just like one wave going through the character. And then there's also the narrowness. So I can turn this way up and you can see the wave is quite small. So when the wave happens, it really distorts the mesh a lot, but it is very small. And I can turn this up even more and now it's just going to be one little wave going over the character. Or if I turn the narrowness way down, now you can see it looks like there's just giant waves because the waves are really big and so the next wave starts even before the other one is finished. So the wave is really big or the wave is really small. Now there is also the option to add a vertex group and with a vertex group you can select parts of the mesh and then it will only control those parts of the mesh. So just for an example I'll go into edit mode and I'm going to go here to the vertex select. And then I'll go to front view and I'll also go into wireframes. So then I can just box select all of these vertices here, so just the top parts. So what I can now do is add them to a vertex group. And to do that, we need to go here to the object data properties and we need to open up the vertex groups. So I'll click on the plus here to add a vertex group and I can rename this vertex group to top of blob. Now to add this geometry to the vertex group, with this part selected, you can click on the assign button. So I'll go back to object mode now, go back to solid view, actually the material preview, and let's go here to the modifiers. So if we now click on the vertex group, here are all the vertex groups which we've made, we just have this one. So if I choose this, now you can see that only the geometry which was in that group is going to be affected. So the top of the blob moves up and down because that's what we selected in the group, but the bottom isn't affected. Now there's also a start position here and this start position can be controlled by another object. So for example I'll go to the add menu, let's go to empty and I'll just add a plane axis and I'll move the plane axis back here. And why I'm using an empty object is just because the empty object won't show up in the render but you could really use any object. So if I select the blob and go back to the wave modifier, I can choose this eyedropper here and then I can select any object. So now if I play this, you can see that the wave is going to start from wherever the object is. So now if I move this around, the wave is going to start from wherever the object is. So it's basically like offsetting the wave, so the wave will come from this direction. And then there's also some time settings, so we'll open up the time here. And the offset here is going to be the frame number of when the animation actually starts. So let's say I don't want the blob to start jumping until frame 50. Well I'll just turn the offset to 50 and now if I go back to the starting here on the timeline and play this you can see he won't actually start jumping until frame 50. Now the life value here is going to be how many frames he jumps after the start frame. So the offset is going to be the start and then the life here will be how long he'll jump. So if I want him to jump just from frame 50 to frame 100 I could turn the life here to 50 as well. So that way he's going to start at 50 and then 50 more more frames, which is 100, and he'll stop jumping. So if I play this, you can see he won't start jumping till 50, and then when we get to 100, he stops jumping. 
And then just like the fall off here, I tried playing around with the damping and I tried researching it online, but I really couldn't find much use for the damping value. So definitely let me know if you know anything that you can do with the damping, but I really don't find it that useful. And then the speed here, this is really quite simple. You can just turn this up if you want the entire thing to go much faster. Now with the speed here, if you turn it all the way down, it's actually gonna go into the negative values. So if you want to just be very small, just keep it here in the middle. And now you can see it's quite slow, or I can turn this up so it's much faster. Now you can also give the wave modifier a texture. So let's open up the texturing panel right here, and then I'll choose new. So if you wanna add in a texture, you can click on these little buttons right here, and this is going to take you over to the texturing panel. So you can click on open here if you wanna open up a texture on your computer, or you can click on new here if you wanna just create a new blank texture. However, I'm going to choose one of the procedural textures within Blender. So for example, right here on the image or movie, I could choose any of these here. So for example, I'll just choose clouds. And clouds is kind of like Blender's procedural noise texture. So now if I play through this, you can see when the wave is moving, the wave is going to have a noisy texture. So you can see that looks kind of weird, not really useful for animating this blob character, but it could be useful for other things. And then of course you can change the size and the depth of that texture. Now I'm going to unhide all the objects and I'm going to go over here and select this object. So another cool thing about the wave modifier is that you can add multiple waves. So let's click on add modifier and we can search for the wave and then I'll also click on add modifier and we'll search for another wave. So now we have two wave modifiers. But then what I could do is change some of the settings. So for example I could turn off the Y on the top one and then the bottom one I could turn off the X. And so this way there are two wave modifiers going on at once. So you can see like right here you can kind of see it taking effect. So the first wave modifier is going along here and then the second wave modifier is going up and down like that. All right, so I'm just going to delete all the wave modifiers from all the objects, and we'll now be changing all the settings of the wave modifier to create the different animations. So let's select the first one here, this kind of worm character. Let's click on add modifier, and we'll add the wave modifier. Now I want to make this worm character look like he is crawling along. So to change this, we can just turn off the X, and we'll just have the Y turned on. So now it looks like he's kind of moving forward, and you could even animate this character if you want, so you could animate him moving forward. So this would be really useful to create some sort of snake animation or worm animation. Let's choose the next one here. So we're going to choose the blob character here and we'll add a wave modifier to this object. And let's say I don't want him to be moving up and down all at the same time. I want it to be a bit slower. So I could turn up the width on this character. So I'll turn up the width on the wave modifier. And now there's a pause in between when he jumps. All right, let's go to the next object here. So for this flag object, I want to make it look like someone is waving the flag. So we'll go to add modifier and we can add another wave modifier. And then let's also go to the time here and I can just turn the speed down down a little bit so that it won't be moving quite as fast. So I'll turn that speed down. Now it's flapping a little bit slower. And then to make the flag look a little bit better, I could also turn off the motion X here. And so now it looks like the flag is just kind of moving back and forth. And so now the flag kind of looks like it's following along with the movement of the flagpole. All right, let's go to the next object here. And then we will again add the wave modifier to this object. So I wanted to add this object just to kind of give you a better example of what the wave modifier is doing. So you can see because the X and Y is turned on, it's basically kind of starting out from the center. And so the wave modifier is kind of coming out. And then also to kind of see the wave a little bit better, I could turn up the narrowness quite a bit. And let's also go to the time here. And let's also turn the speed way down. And now you can clearly see the wave moving along the object. All right, let's go to the last one here. So we'll select this object here. And one more time, we're going to add the wave modifier. Now, let's say I just want the wave to go, be going down. So it'll start at the top and it'll kind of affect it going down. So what we can do for this is we can just turn off the X motion here. And so now it's just going to be moving along the Y. And I can change the height value. So if I turn the height value way up, it's going to be wobbling a lot more. So those are some cool things you can do with Blender's wave modifier. So I hope you learned something new and I hope you had some fun playing around with the wave modifier. And again, you can download these project files for free on my Gumroad store and Patreon page. Links are in the description. But I hope you found this helpful, and thank you for watching.